found it kind of hard to read. Uh, what, what is the first inflection point there? Okay, this right here is 1900. Okay. This is 1800, and we have blue, red, and green, which are clumsy, or cumbersome, clumsy, and awkward in front of Roman numerals, respectively. They go up, 1900, that's about 1930, 1940. So basically, post-World War II, they're, they're all in decline. So this is really uh, an early 20th century formulation. Um, of course, it's persisted to some degree. We're, we're still all familiar with this formulation. Now, what red, blue, red, and green? So cumber, these are phrases, cumbersome Roman numerals, clumsy Roman numerals, and awkward Roman numerals. Uh, I've done a bunch of other searching for different sorts of things. For instance, the Roman numerals weren't always called Roman numerals. They were called numeral letters sometimes. But you don't find any of, you, I mean, basically, Prior to the 19th century, basically no one was complaining about the Roman numerals, mm -hmm. even as people were still using them in the, in the 18th and 19th centuries. I don't want to belabor it. I think one can, if one digs into this, when you see inflection points like that, uh, you can discern, and I've done some of this in my work, changes in consciousness that mm -hmm. sometimes, like your inflection point, like are yep. fairly dramatic. Yep. Okay. Uh, in and most typically related to changes in political circumstances. Mm -hmm. Right, and I certainly would agree that some of what you're seeing here is not just industrialization broadly construed, but a certain form of, I mean, I, I use the word modernist, and I, and I really mean that. It's associated with uh, a particular techno-capitalist formulation that we really see in American social life, although this this text set also includes British and other, you know, English language. We would, of course, have to do separate analyses of the formulations in, in other languages to see it. But no, I absolutely agree that this is this is absolutely related to changes in social, political, technical circumstances. But I think it illustrates very well that prior to the 20th century, people people didn't feel as strongly as we now imagine they must have, even though the Roman numerals did, in fact, get replaced. That's the, that's the key there. Yeah, fine. Yeah, sort of on this note of changes in consciousness, so can you talk a little bit about how, you know, with this sort of, you know, deep state, right, hyper state <laughs> in which we sort of all find ourselves, how is numerical notation and numerical cognition and you know, conspicuous computation. How are these all shifting and playing sort of a role, um, or, or or being you know sort of manipulated in this deep state? Kind of building on Alan's question. There. So part, partly, I want to I want to be a little bit cautious, inevitably, because we're speculating on what people think. Um, I also want to reject a sort of a strand of political economic theory that really sees the sorts of interests of pre-modern states as inevitably radically different than modern states. I think the evidence from conspicuous computation shows that this has kind of been around a long, long time. This is not something new, and that this has something more broadly and comparatively to do with the way that humans work with numbers and humans work with text. I mean, I could go into a whole other talk about display texts. I won't do that because I don't have any time. But this is all informed by the comparative literature from epigraphy on, on, you know, and, you know, including colleagues who are archaeologists, linguists, anthropologists, on the the role of display inscriptions more broadly. Um, having said that, I also would not reject the idea that in some, in certain kinds of ways, there are things that are new. But that's, that's a trickier question, and, and that requires an attention to what's actually the same and what's different. And one of the, I mean, that's a problem that I have with all kinds of theorists that I would respect quite a lot. You know, I think one of the challenges with Foucault is I think he's really interested in early modern France, and he doesn't know that much about early dynastic Egypt, which is, which is okay. You don't have to know everything, but then we've based, a, we've based a generation of social theory on a set of claims that really originate with early modern France and not with the broader context. Jeff. Um, 
something that you said about that document from 1505 struck a, a chord that makes me suggest that there's another issue hiding in the background in the, in the question of the relative value of Roman numerals versus um, or what we traditionally call Arabic yeah. numerals, which is that Roman numerals do not require a separate set of characters. Right. They just use the alphabet. Yes and no. Um, and that is, they only use things that are letters in at least English and French. And uh, It is certainly true today, but it was not true for the Romans. No, but it's been true for, what, five, six hundred years? Right. So, so I want to I emphasize that. Right. The Roman numerals were not letters in Roman times. Um, they clearly weren't conceptualized as letters. Even what we think of as M, they didn't write M for 1,000. They wrote, they wrote a line with little parentheses, circles, or like, this is, this is three line, three parentheses around a line, that's 100,000. Two lines is 10,000, and one parentheses around a bar is 1,000. So three parentheses around a line is and, Jewish. Mm -hmm. That was, that was an, an in-joke which yeah. some people will get, but, uh, but sorry. But, but also note that we think of D as 500, but D is actually not just D. It's actually just half, half of, yeah. of a line and, a, and one parenthesis. Like, why would D be 500,000? It's not, it's, you know, five, 500 in Latin is, you know, quincenta, quincenta. Uh, my Latin is terrible. Um, but, you know, there's no D in it. It doesn't have anything to do with the D. Um, all of the Roman numerals for the halves of the powers, so 50, 500, 550, 500, are graphically half of the signs for, for 10, 100,000. V is half of X, it's the top half. L is half of C, it's the bottom half. So V isn't, isn't four ones and a line through it abbreviated. Nope. It is, it is half of X. Standard etymology. It is, that is, um, no. Or at least a suggested etymology. That is a suggested etymology. Okay. It's, it's, but it's I, clearly. I mean, to, let me, let me, anyway, let me go back to the, to the, to, to the point I was yeah. making, because I think this may still work, which is I'm going to suggest, based also on your, your n-gram, that what, what made me think about this is the fact that linguists um, it wasn't until the, the advent of computers and fonts that ling linguists were able to write phonetically easily. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, prior to that, you had to have access to fancy type fonts and you needed to talk. But once there were, once there were fonts on computers, you could write IPA. So let's back up a century mm -hmm. and suggest that the invention of the typewriter and its ubiquity, which is roughly where that inflection point lies, mm -hmm. gives true. people instant access to Roman, to Arabic numerals mm -hmm. as easily as the letters, <coughs> which by that time they were all letters. Right. So that I'm suggesting the ease of being able to write Arabic numbers had something to do with the rise in their popularity. That's interesting. I'll have to think about that. Of course, we bear in mind that by by the by this time the replacement was actually done. They were they were well and they were well and truly dead or restricted to those archaic functions by 1750, 1780, okay. and so they're in they're they're in printed texts. But for the printer, all you need is those ten, ten ten new more digits, thingies, yeah. and okay. and that actually happened pretty quickly. This one's actually kind of an exception. It's a it's a neat one, but it is an exception. But I'll have to think about that some more. Yeah. All right. For Thank you very much. Hey.